Welcome to the Cape Computer Science Unit 2 specimen paper. This is uh, paper 2 where I work out all the questions according to the new syllabus that would have been set out in what, 2022. So it's examinable from 2022 onwards. And I every module, when I finish a module, I check the answers that they have in the specimen paper. We check to see if my answers match up to theirs. If my answers do match up to theirs, then we say, okay, if they don't match up, I check to see if I made the, made the mistake or they made the mistake. But all in all, it's supposed to help you understand and interpret the questions and more so see how they mark and see what a mark scheme looks like and the kind of keywords that they look for. And sometimes that their mark scheme may be kind of wrong and we have to kind of tussle with that as CSEC um, and Cape students. So check it out, watch the video. I hope it helps you understand at least the reasoning process for all of the answers that we have. And wherever there are mistakes, I would have checked the answers and see if they matched up. So this should help you out, especially for um, people who, if you've been doing a lot of old past papers, this one will help you understand the new format of the exam, which is a bit different, right? So um, enjoy the video. All right, this is the specimen paper for 2022. This is the new syllabus, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the questions. Um, first of all, we had to kind of remember that the syllabus has changed. Because the syllabus has changed, we will basically be um, basically be answering three questions. No, two 15 mark questions per module, three modules. So the amount of marks per module is 50, whereas in all the past papers that we've done before, it's been 50, right? And each one of those questions now 15 marks and usually in a comsci paper 15 marks could be one question so what they would try to do is they try to bring back some of the old questions that they used to use but they will try to cut it down and ask a lot of things that may require depth um as opposed to just regurgitation knowledge and because it may not just be regurgitation knowledge the questions that they ask could be focused on one particular topic that may be a little overblown or they might ask a wide range of questions for two marks or three marks everywhere to show understanding. So let's try with explain how a stack ADT is implemented. So this is a normal question that they used to ask all the time and it would be for three marks. Um, the three things that you basically need for a stack is you need to um, create an array um, with a defined size and um, then create a variable called top that will key track of the topmost value in the stack right so the three marks there is basically creating the array with the defined size and then saying that any top and then explaining why top needs to be there now when we go to the answers um because this is the specimen paper we will see what they were looking for and that will give us a little clue as to how they kind of mark these questions but basically that's the three marks there that they that they'll be um looking for so a stack is required to store a set of characters assume that top is global um write code to declare the variables that will be needed by the stack assume that the stack size is 1000 characters so it's a set of characters so it'll be char um stack 1000 that will give us the 1000 and yeah they said that top is global so we'll just say in top is equal to minus one I don't know if you need to, um, to declare it up because it's a top of global, but that's basically what we, what we need. The two things that you need for the stack to work. Alright, write the function using C code that pushes the character C onto the stack for you must get up a stack overflow. So we're not assuming that we could use any is full or is empty inside these um, questions here, meaning we had to check for the value up top, right? So we will name the function um, char push. Sorry, yeah, because we're pushing our character, right? Um, char C. Well, no, will it read? Does the stack return anything? We can name it void. The push could just be a void because top is global. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it as void. Void push char C. Um, and we want to say um, if top is greater than or equal to 1000, um, print stack overflow. Else, um, wait, do you give us more lines? Wait kind of weird boy. Another real little bit of space to write a function for a push. Anyhow, else um, we are assuming that the stack is declared right. 
stock location C, stock location top is equal to C and then top plus plus. Hold on, no, we are doing top plus plus first, then this is top plus plus. Carry up the top from wherever the previous top was and then put the value of C there. So that'll be the new value that's on top here. Yeah. So for this else here, we need to put curly brackets. Find it a little bit of space though, but okay, right. That should be the that should be the push there. The push good? That's cool. Mm, yeah, I think yeah, I think that should be them. Right. So that's the push. Four marks. Write the function using C code that pops a character from the stack. So we have to write a pop now. Um, the pop has a return value. So we have to name this char, char pop because you're returning. Well, when you pop from the stack, you have to return the value and it's a character array. So we have to pop it from there. So pop from the stack, I guess, just now. I'm going to go back to this. Um, Do I have to put stack as a... I'll put, I'll put char C and um, char stack square brackets. Just so that we have the two things that are necessary in the um, in the array. Because you need to have the stack as a variable. Pushed it. Because they didn't say the stack was global. They said top was global. So yeah, you had to do that. Alright, so for the pop now, we just pop in from char stack square brackets. That will give us the that will give us the stack to work with. And now to pop, we have to consider stack underflow. So we have to say if top is less than or equal to minus one um then print up the stack is empty and then else we want to return um stack location top and then go top minus minus mm -hmm. all right that should be it there the reason this will be six marks i guess is because yeah all right so let's go and um let's compare it to the Compare it to the answer that they that they how do I have the answer open open that's not alright so let's see what they had they have alright abstract data type an array that could be used to study elements a top that keeps track of the topmost element and when an element is added the top is incremented yeah or deleted or the top is diverted so they they're looking for a little description about what top is and um, we give the description of the top is all keep track of the topmost value of the stack. Right, so good. All right, so then they have the int top kind of they can use top equal to zero if they want. Okay, we set top as minus one char items. All right, we name it stack. Good. All right, so void push now. You see what they have in their answer? They have the they don't have any um, they don't have any they didn't put the stack as being passed to the to the array to the function. Sorry, but I believe because they didn't say that the stack was declared globally, well. Of course, the stack will have to be declared globally. Yeah, I guess the stack has to be declared globally. But you know, passing it as a, a parameter, I'm not really gonna hope any hope will hurt anybody. If top is equal to nine nine nine, we have greater than or equal to one thousand. It should be nine 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 because it starts at zero. All right, yes, I am. That, that was wrong. There. It should be greater than or equal to nine 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 because it's a thousand elements and. Um, the highest possible value will be zero. Will be nine nine nine. Right, stack overflow. We didn't put a backslash n because we don't care. Top plus plus. Item stop is equal to c. Right, good. So then now the pop now. Pop. You have to send the stack to it. Yeah. In this one, they pass any the, the 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 whole array to the to the pop, but they didn't pass the whole thing to the um previous one. That was kind of awkward. But why did they put char c is equal to blank? Oh, because they create a variable to hold the value. We didn't create a variable to hold the value. We just return whatever is that stacked up one time. So in their answer, they create a variable C to be able to be where you store the read the value that you're going to return. We just do the else return what is uh, stacked up one time. So that will be totally correct because it's totally legal to return the value from the array one time. Let me see how much lines they do this in. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten eleven and they give us one two three four five six seven eight line yeah that's 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 not nice your answer has 11 lines where you only give students nine lines and then for some questions where you don't need all those lines you're getting all of them but that's question one um any questions there or everybody good with that those are common questions i should be able to do no, they could do this exact same thing with a Q. They could do this exact same thing with um with some linked list questions where they ask you to draw out linked list or that kind of thing because the first question is always stack skews and linked list. That is abstract data types. The second question is the searches and sorts, right? So let's go to the second question. Second question is the following bubble sort function implements the bubble sort algorithm on an array of integers. All right, so we have void bubble sort. Um, let's that's standard bubble sort you have your outer loop you have your inner loop you have your swap right so explain the purpose of the outer for loop yeah these are questions that they would have asked before but as i said they have to break down into smaller bite-sized pieces now to make up the 15 marks instead of giving one big long question 
Okay, the outer loop. Um, this is every location of the array except for the last um, value. This ensures every ensures every possible comparison is made explain carefully the process that occurs in the inner for loop right the inner for loop well inner bubble so the inner for loop is to do the comparisons right the inner loop this loop this loops compares every adjacent index in the array and checks to see if the higher index has a bigger value yeah higher index has a bigger value than the lower index if this is so the values are swapped all right cool <laughs> state why the upper limit for j uh in the inner loop is num items i minus one and not num items okay so this is clearly them asking some sort of question to sh to see if you understand what's taking place instead of just writing all the code which is which is something we could expect in these in these new types of papers they really don't have much marks for they really don't have much space to give they want to regurgitation they really want to want to get clear understanding of what's taking place so it's um this is this ensures that the last comparison can take place no last comparison is not of a value that also that has already been sorted right because once you reach the um num items i minus minus one that means the i would would be the outer loop so the i the outer loop is going to cut off the array at certain points to say okay that has been sorted already so that will always remind you okay when you reach to this point we don't have to sort anymore because that has already been moved to its correct place. The smallest value is trying to get to the end in a, in a bubble sort. Alright, write C code which performs a linear switch and an array called num containing 100 elements. Your code must check if the key is present by accepting an integer key from the user. All right. Now when they ask this, uh, as you all know from all the other past papers that I would have done, um, when they say write C code, we're not too sure if they allow you to write a function or if they want you to write a whole program. Based on previous um, outings, we kind of realize that they want you to write a whole program. And because when you write a whole program, you don't get to do some of the easier things, which is just return the value as soon as you find it. When you do a whole program, you have to like create a variable to store if it is found and then do a if at the end to say if the key is found, this or whatnot. So I'm going to do it how they normally want you to do it, which is write the code. But I would really love if they would accept a function. So when we check the answers, we'll see if they wrote it as a function or not. But when they say write C code, they were to start off with hashtag include stdio.h. I really hope when I go to the answers, it, it's a function. Um, we need to declare the variables int num um a r r 100 and um key yeah. that's all we need so far or oh, we need something to loop we need a for loop so we need a c for our counter c is equal to zero okay void mean yeah i probably need to conceal space i'll make the um i'll make the the formatting i'll put it you know when you put the curly bracket here some people get triggered because there are some people who put the curly brackets at the start of the function and some people put it under the function but we don't have space for that Alright, so we want to do, we want to create, we are, want to ask the user for the, um, from the user, so printf, please enter the value you are searching for. All of this should have been the main and all the variables being the clear should have been the main. But it don't matter, it will still work because they will just be like global variables. Okay. Um, scanf, um, percent d, everything is an integer, comma, and key. Right. So now we have the key. So now it's to put in the for loop. Or C is equal to zero. C less than 100. C plus plus. And our loop now is going to check to see if ARR location C is equal to key. Um, what we want to do? Hold on, continue. Your code must check if the key is present by accepting an integer key from the user. All right, check it is even present. I guess you could just print Found. Printer. Found. They didn't ask you what index is present at. They didn't ask you anything. They just asked you to check to see if the key is present by accepting the key from the user. Right, so we just print found. That follows the rules of exactly what they asked for, right? I guess so. We check for the key. If the key matches, we print found. They didn't ask you to see if it was not found. They just said that, right? Hmm. Somehow I'm feeling like they wanted more, but they didn't say. Or oh, because just writing a linear search for nine marks doesn't it doesn't really make sense. The name of the array is supposed to be called num. My name it ARR. My bad num num. Okay. All right, let's go check the answers and see what they did. Let's see if we can make sense of it. Okay, 
Okay. All right. The outer loop is used to make num items passes, where each pass will result in one element limit array being placed in its correct position. Um, the outer loop traverses every location of the array except for the last value. This ensures every possible comparison is made. They have will result in one element of the array being placed in its correct position. Do I agree with that, boy? Mm, I'll add it in here and the sorted value are kept separate yeah all right i'll just add it i'll explain carefully the process that curves for the inner for loop it goes through the unsorted elements of the array starting from the beginning and compares adjacent elements right we have compared if the element on the left is greater than the element on the right the elements are swapped using a temporary variable but see the index uh, every adjacent index in the array and seeks to see if the larger index has a bigger value than the lower index should be smaller value has a smaller value all right if this is so the values are swapped Ooh, they have swap using a temporary variable no, i don't think you need to say swap using a temporary variable if you just say swapped yeah swapped is good all right state why the upper limit for gene you know because num items i minus one each path of the outer loop places one element in its correct position starting from the right so the inner loop only con considers the unsorted elements which go from right yeah same thing what they have is they just started with int x for x's yeah printf found that location all right this is where we have our problem because clearly the question asks you to check to see if the key is present by accepting the integer key but in their answer they're printing out the location that it was found at and they're giving you marks for stating the location where it was found so two marks means that you have to put the location that it was found at but the question never said print out the location it just said check to see if the key is present and then they have printing not found correctly yeah so to check to see if it's not found if x is equal to 100 print is not found and this is where this is where the confusion comes in the what the standard way of doing a linear search is to make sure that you say found not found and print the location and that's what they seem like they want you to do for the question which is say it was found say the location and then print not found if the whole loop um, runs out but they didn't ask you to do that they asked you to check to see if the key is present by accepting an integer from the user that's all they didn't say check to see if the key is present and print the appropriate message if it is not found if they did that things would have be all different okay all right well i'll modify it just to meet their standard because so every time they have a linear search you just print out the location to found at percent d yeah not and sorry i'm not for c found at percent dc and then if we reach the end of the for loop and say if c equals 100 printer um, not found all right so that's fully what they are looking for even though the question didn't state it so this probably applies to every everything if you ever do a linear search if you do a binary search if you do a, um, a sort a selection sort just do everything and do write it as a function because clearly they don't want you to write it as a function they said write it as code and their answer looks like that i think that the question could be a little less ambiguous but all right all right so of course thanks for watching you made it to the end if you're looking for cape it classes that you want me to teach you could check us out at education.makeitsimplett.com and you will see all the different packages that we have for Cape IT classes. And of course, you can always come back to this YouTube channel and there will always be free videos here to explain different things to you. But if you want dedicated classes that will explain certain things to you and make sure you understand the syllabus inside out, then check us out education.makeitsimplett.com. You'll see Cape IT and we have a various um, set of classes from crash courses all the way down to full on classes with assignments and IA assistance and people through assistance. So you can check that out. Uh, make it simple, tt.com.